everyone. I am Dr. Ekta Bhushan, teaching anatomy and physiology of exercise, sports medicine and exercise prescription at Indira Gandhi Institute of Physical Education and Sports Sciences, University of Delhi. I welcome you all to uh, online lectures of CEC UGC. In this series, we will discuss different topics associated with sports medicine, but today in particular, we will discuss the topic first aid for various sports injuries. Accident happen, especially during sports. While it is possible to limit the number and severity of injuries with prevention strategies, one wrong step or a collision on the field can result in a sudden and painful injury. When this happens, be prepared to act quickly. Ideally, you will have access to a well-stocked first aid kit or have a medical help nearby. The most common acute uh, sports related injuries vary by age. For example, younger athletes are at high risk of fracture and dislocation. Concussions are also more commonly reported in younger athletes, especially those who participate in contact sports such as football, rugby, uh, hockey and wrestling and uh, soccer and basketball. So let's start with uh, the injury cuts and scraps first aid. To first aid the cuts and scrap you have to first of all wash your hands. This helps to avoid infection. Then stop the bleeding. Minor cuts and scraps usually stop bleeding on their own. If needed, apply gentle pressure uh, with a clean bandage or cloth and elevate the wound and until the bleeding stops. Then clean the wound. Rinse the wound with water, keeping the wound under running tap water uh, will uh, reduce the risk of infection. Wash around uh, the wound with soap but don't get soap in the wound and you don't use hydrogen peroxide or iodine which can be irritating. Remove any dirt or debris with tweezer uh, cleaned with alcohol. See a doctor if you can't remove all the debris. Then apply an antibiotic or petroleum jelly. Apply a thin layer of an antibiotic ointment or petroleum jelly to keep the surface moist and help prevent scarring. Certain ingredients in some ointment can cause a mild rash in some people. If a rash appears, stop using the ointment. Then cover the wound. Apply a bandage, rolled gauze or gauze help in a place with paper tape. Covering the wound uh, keeps it clean. If the injury is just a minor scrap or scratch, leave it uncovered. Change the dressings. Do this uh, at least once a day or whenever the bandage becomes wet or dirty. Get a tetanus shot. Get a tetanus shot if you haven't had uh, one in the past 5 years and the wound is deep or dirty. Watch for sign of infection. See a doctor if you see signs of infection on the skin or near the wound such as redness, uh, increasing pain, drainage, warmth or swelling. Now we will uh, look into the first state for blisters. If a blister is not too painful, try to keep it uh, intact. Unbroken skin over a blister may provide a natural barrier to the bacteria's and decreases the risk of infection. Cover it with a bandage or a moleskin. Cut a piece of moleskin into a 
donut shape and place a pad so that it uh, uh, encircle the protect uh, protect the blister then cover the blister and mold skin with gauze seek medical care if the blister looks infected if you have a uh, diabetes or poor circulation call your doctor before treating the blister yourself now how to drain a blister wash your hands and the blister with the soap and warm water then swab the blister uh, with the iodine then clean a sharp needle with rubbing alcohol then use the needle to prick the blister in a several spots near the edge let the fluid drain but leave the overlying skin in the place then apply an, uh, an ointment such as petroleum jelly to uh, the blister and cover it with a non stick gauze bandage if a rash appears stop using the ointment follow up care check the area every day for the infection after several days use a tweezer and a scissor sterilized with rubbing alcohol to cut away the dead skin apply more ointment and bandage now first aid for contusion a bruise a uh, form when a blow break blood vessels near your skin surface allowing a small amount of blood to leak into the tissues under your skin the trapped blood may cause a bruise that uh, at first looks like a black and blue mark and then changes color as it heals you can enhance bruise healing with a a few simple techniques remember rice uh, rest ice compression and elevation so first is uh, rest the bruise area if possible ice the bruise with an ice pack wrapped in a towel leave it in a place for 10 to 20 minutes repeat several times a day for uh, for a day or two as needed then compress uh, the bruise area if uh, it is swelling using an elastic band don't make it too light then elevate the injured area now we will uh, study about the first stage for strain you can see the stages of strain also grade 1 grade 2 grade 3 so a strain is when a muscle is stretched too much and tears it is also called a pulled muscle a strain is a painful injury it can be caused by an accident over using a muscle or using a muscle in a wrong way so causes of a strain a strain may cause by too much physical activity or effort improperly uh, warming up before a physical activity poor flexibility symptoms can be uh, like a uh, uh, strain can include pain and difficult moving uh, the injured muscle discolored and bruised skin or swelling so take the following steps of uh, first aid steps to treat the strain first of all apply ice right away to the redu- to reduce the swelling wrap the ice ice in cloth do not place ice directly on the skin apply ice uh, for 10 to 15 minutes every 1 hour for the first day and every 3 to 4 hours after that then uh, use ice for the first 3 days after 3 days okay then rest the pulled muscle for at least a day if possible keep the pulled muscle raised above your heart try not to use a strained muscle while it is still painful when the pain starts to go away you can slowly increase activity by gently stretching the injured muscle 
Now we will uh, say, uh, see the first aid for sprain. Your ligaments are tough, elastic like bands that connect bone to bone and hold your joints in place. A sprain is an injury to a ligament caused by tearing off the fibers of the ligaments. The ligaments can have a partial tear or it can be a completely torn part. Ankle sprain are the most common type of sprain. Wrist, knee, thumb sprain are also common. Sprained ligament often swell rapidly and are painful. Generally, the greater the pain and swelling, the more severe the injury is. For most minor sprains, you probably can start initial injury treatment, uh, treatment yourself. The first treatment is rest. So rest the injured limb. Your doctor may recommend not putting any weight on the injured area for 48 to 72 hours. So you may need to use cr crutches, a splint or brace also may be helpful initially but don't avoid all activity. So even with an ankle sprain, you can usually still exercise other muscles uh, to minimize disconditioning. For example, you can use an exercise bicycle with arms, uh, arm exercise handles working uh, both your arms and the injured leg while resting the injured ankle on other parts of the bike. That uh, way you still get a three limb exercise to keep up your cardiovascular conditioning. The next part is icing. Icing the area, use a cold uh, pack, a slush bath or a compression sleeve filled with cold water to help limit swelling after an injury. Try to ice the area as soon as possible after the injury and continue to ice it for 15 to 20 minutes 4 to 8 times a day for the first 48 hours until swelling improves. Uh, if you use ice, be careful not to use it too long as this could cause tissue damage. Then compress the area with an elastic wrap or bandage. Compressive wraps or sleeves made from elastic or neoprene are best. Then elevate the injured limb uh, above your heart whenever possible to help prevent or limb swelling. Sprain can take days to months to recover. As the pain and swelling improve, gently begin using the injured area. You should feel a gradual progressive uh, improvement over the counter pain relievers such as uh, brufen and acetaminophen and other may be, may be helpful to manage pain during the healing process. Then it is essential to restore strength and stability to the injured limb prior to a return to sports or fitness activity, a physical therapist or other sports medicine provider can provide you with a appropriate strength and stability exercises to optimize healing and minimize the risk of repeat injury. The injuries that cause sprain can also cause serious injuries including fractures, See your doctor if your sprain is not improving after 2 or 3 days. Then the next injury is uh, fracture and we are going to learn the first aid for fractures. A fracture is a broken bone. It requires medical attention. If the broken bone is the result of major trauma or injury, call 112 or your local emergency number. Also call for emergency help if the person is 
unresponsive is not breathing or is not moving begin cpr if there is no breathing or heartbeat there is a heavy bleeding even gentle pressure or movement causes pain the limb or joint appears deformed the bone has pierced the skin the extremity of the injured arm or leg such as a toe or finger is numb or bruised at the tip your uh, you suspect a bone is broken in the neck or head or back now don't move the person except if necessary to avoid further injury take these actions immediately while waiting for medical help so first step is stop the bleeding apply pressure to the wound uh, with a sterilized bandage or, or a clean cloth uh, or a clean piece of clothing then immobilize the injured area don't try to uh, realign the bone or push a bone that sticking out back in if you have been trained in how to splint and uh, professional help is not readily available apply a splint to the area above and uh, below the fracture sites padding the splint can help reduce discomfort then apply ice packs to limit swelling and help relieve pain don't apply ice directly to the skin Ra- wrap the ice in a towel and piece of cloth or some other material then treat for shock if the person feels faint or is breathing in short rapid breaths lay the person down with the head slightly lower than the trunk and if possible elevate the legs then first aid for dislocation a dislocation is an injury in which the ends of your bone are forced and from their normal positions the cause is usually trauma resulting uh, from a fall an auto accident or a collision during contact or high speed sports dislocation usually involves the body's larger joint in adult the most common site of the injury is the shoulder in children uh, it's the elbow your thumb and fingers are also vulnerable if forcibly bent or wrong way the injury will temporarily deform and immobilize your joint and may result in sudden and severe pain and swelling a dislocation requires prompt medical attention to return your bones to their proper positions so if you believe you have a dislocated a joint don't delay medical care get a medical help immediately then don't move the joint until you receive help splint the affected joint into its fixed position don't try to move a dislocated joint or force it back into the place this can damage the joint and its surrounding muscles ligaments nerves or blood vessels put icing on the injured joint this can help reduce swelling by controlling internal bleeding and the build up of fluid in and around the injured joint now first aid for cramps heat cramps are painful involuntary muscle spasm that usually occur during the heavy exercise in hot environment the spasm may be more intense and more prolonged than our typical uh, nighttime le- leg cramps fluid or ele- uh, fluid and electrolytes loss often con- contribute to heat cramps muscles most often affected includes those of your calves arms abdominal walls and back although heat cramps may involve any muscle group involved in exercise so if you suspect heat cramps rest briefly and cool down 
drink clear juices or an electrolyte containing sports drink practice gentle range of motion stretching and gentle massage of the affected muscle group don't resume strenuous activity for several hours or longer after heat cramps go away call your doctor if your cramps don't go away within an hour or so so now we'll learn about bandages and types of bandages first of all let's look into the term bandage and dressings are often mistaken for an another while dressings refers to the primary layer to put in the wound and bandage on the other hand uh, is used to hold dressing in place a bandage is a piece of soft and uh, absorbent material aside from holding dressing in place it helps immobilize a body part support an injury eliminate uh cav- cavities and prevent uh, hemorrhages there is a specific bandage made for each task so let's uh, look into the first bandage that is roller bandages a roller bandages or gauze bandage is the most common type uh, uh, found in most first aid kits it is a simple wide stripe material with an absorbed barrier that helps prevent it from sticking to the wound then how to use uh, in an open wound start by uh, applying a suitable pad or dressing to the injury site take the bandage while holding the rolled up and wrap it gently around the pad start from the bottom and work up do not forget to add a few centimeters to keep the bandage tight and compressed then the next one is triangular bandage a triangular or a cravat bandage is a piece of cloth put into a right angle uh, triangle with safety first aid pins to protect it from moving so how we can use it cross the victim's arms near the chest while putting the bandage around the back of the neck and across bring together the end of the each side to meet tie into a knot the next bandage is tabular bandage and how we can use the tabular bandage wear it over an extremity extremity to secure a dressing in place it does not require the use of pin tape wrapping or fastening as it easily fits on the affected limb without uh, constricting the blood circulation the next one is compression bandage and how we can tie up the compression bandage circle uh, the bandage around the injury and cross it over to the opposite side secure the ends of the dressing not to bother the skin make sure to keep it in a wrap but not too tight now we have come to the conclusion so sports injuries are caused uh, by overuse direct impact or the application of force that is greater than the body part can a structurally uh, withstand common injuries include bruises sprain strain uh, joint injuries and nose bleeding treatment depends on the types and severity of the injury sports injuries are commonly caused by overuse direct impact or the application of force that is greater than the body part can structurally withstand and injury that happens suddenly such as a sprained ankle caused by an awkward football is known as an acute injury chronic injuries are caused by overusing the same muscle groups or joints poor techniques and structural abnormalities can also contribute to the development of chronic injuries medical investigation of any sports injury is important because you may be hurt more severely than you think for example 
the what seems like an ankle sprain may actually be a bone fracture. So, I hope you understood first aid for various sports injuries like lacration, contusion, sprain, strain, fracture, dislocation and various types of bandages and their methods to use. That's all for today. See you next time. Thank you.